All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to continue on with our exploration of writing equations in slope-intercept form. So we've done a bunch of graphing. Now we're going to kind of go backwards and write the actual equation. It's really going to be focused still on your slope and y-intercept so that we can make it in slope-intercept form. So I can write equations of lines in slope-intercept form. Let's learn how to do that. So if you notice on this one, we have a nice graph already created for us. It, in fact, it even gives us the numbers there for the points. But as you're getting prepared for the test, we may not give you the dots. We might not even give you the numbers. So you're going to have to go ahead and use your skills that we're going to practice right now. Now remember, we need a slope and a y-intercept. So in order to find your slope, it's really just a continuation of what we've been doing, which is rise over run. So we can go ahead and count that. Or you could also use your formula that we've been practicing, with it, which is your basic substitution. So you can substitute it, which is going to look like this again. And again, we've done this before. Oh, look at the top. It needs to be negative 5 plus 2, which really gives me a negative 3 over 4. So that's my slope. My y-intercept is where the line touches the y-axis. So it's going to be right there, which is represented as 0, negative 2. So now that you have these two pieces, you can go ahead and make your equation. y equals mx plus b. And then I just do the basic substitution, kind of like what we did on a recent assignment. <clears throat> Again, if you wanted to count, it would be down 1, 2, 3. You can make your right triangle. Right 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, down 3, right 4. That is always a helpful method as well, especially when you're given a graph. Using your slope formula, though, that could be used essentially any time. If you notice, this is going uphill, so we definitely need a positive slope. You could use your formula. Remember, we could also make our right triangle. So it would be a 4 subtract a 3 and a 4 subtract a 0. So my slope would obviously be a 1 fourth, which is uphill, which is gradual like that. Now, again, if you wanted to, you can make your right triangle, which would be up 1, right 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, make your right triangle up 1, right 4, which is the slope right there that you see, 1 fourth. Hey, look at it. It even shows up right there. Beautiful. Up 1, right 4, 1 fourth. My y-intercept, remember, that's where the line touches the y-axis, which is right here, 0, 3. So essentially, being able to write your equation given a graph, it's a little bit easier than just given data points, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Once I know my slope and my y-intercept, boom, got my equation ready to go. All right, one more from a graph, then we'll just look at some data. If you notice this time, it is going downhill, so that means I should get a negative slope. Formula, if you'd like to use that method, again, which is a great practice, my substitution for my y's would be a negative 5 subtract a negative 1, which really becomes a negative 5, plus 1. My x's would be a 3, subtract a 0. So that 0 is very, very helpful for us. Negative 5 plus 1 gives me a negative 4, and 3, subtract 0, just a 3. So if you notice, we get a negative slope like we predicted. My y-intercept, again, is where the line touches the y-axis. Let's actually go back to that picture. If you want to do a right triangle again, it'd be down 1, 2, 3, 4, right 1, 2, 3. Again, rise over run, great resource when you have the graph. And then basic substitution for your answer. Very nice, very nice. Again, we're going kind of quick. You can pause it, back it up, whatever you'd like to do since you are watching it on the nice video. All right, going uphill, positive slope. Quick formula, identifying or labeling, substitution, 
Looks like it's going to be a 4 subtract a 2 and a 1 subtract a 0. Oh, this is nice and easy. So our slope is 2 over 1, which is really just 2, right? So our slope, we're going to say, is 2 because we're writing the equation. When we're graphing, we would need the 2 over 1, but we're just writing the equation. Y-intercept, again, is where the line touches the y-axis, but got the nice picture form there. Rise 2, run 1, 2 over 1, which is 2. Y-intercept, again, where the line touches the y-axis, 0, 2. Quick substitution, y equals 2x plus 2. All right, so this is the one that I really wanted us to focus on. If you only have the data instead of the graph. Now, one thing is you could always plot that and make a graph and then do your visualization and your counting. But most students, again, would just go ahead and label the x1, y1, x2, y2, basic substitution. And if you notice this point right here, 0, 5, that is your y-intercept. So one of your data points already gives you half of your answer, which is the y-intercept. We're really just trying to find the slope. So with our formula substitution, it would be 6 subtract a 5 and 4 subtract a 0. Again, that 0 really helps out. So it's really just a 1 fourth again. Once I have my slope, I identify again, I have my y-intercept, which is the 0, 5. Once I have both points, got my nice equation. So again, it doesn't matter if you have the data, like on example 5, or if you have the graph, you need your slope and you need your y-intercept. So again, really quick, really basic. We're going to come back together, do a little bit of homework help, and be awesome.